Hello. In this video, we are looking at language paper one, question two, which is worth eight marks. However, the approach, the skills, the way we go about it is virtually identical to question four in paper one, which is 20 marks, question three in paper two, which is 12 marks, and question four in paper two, which is 16 marks. So this almost serves as the foundations for the rest of your language paper. So it is one that is so important that we get right. And the best way of getting it right is to be working on it as we go through it together. English is not one of those things that we can talk about and read about and bang, we're good at it. English is something that the best way of going about it is by doing it together to start off with and then the teacher stepping back and letting you carry on with it at your own practice and your own speed at your own leisure. The more you practice, the better you will do, okay? So let's get cracking, let's look at question two and let's see where it takes us. Okay, so question two will look like this, okay? It will give us a little introduction at the start, look in detail at this extract from line seven to 18 in the source, and it will give you a really nice, rich little part of the text for you to focus your answer on. And then it will say, how does the writer use language here to describe the image in the dream? Now I'm gonna go through literally step by step what I'll be doing, okay? And this is where your highlighter comes in handy, and you're gonna want one of these when you go into your exam, okay? So first of all, First of all, I want to make sure I'm making sure all my points link back to the focus of the question. So all my points need to come back to the image in the dream. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. Now, when I read through my text, now I'm looking for quotes that are going to tell me lots of information about the image in the dream. Now, this is where we are looking for our rich quotes. A rich quote is a quote that is nice and short and sweet, but it's got lots and lots for us to say about. And we are looking for our top four favorite methods. We are looking for figurative language. Figurative language is any time we're comparing something to something else. We are looking for any alliteration. Alliteration is any sounds that are grouped together deliberately. We are looking for interesting words that are loaded with connotations and ideas. And we are looking for sentences. The vast majority of students won't go near sentences. They're scared of them, okay? They're scared of getting them wrong. So if we can find a sentence, then that's going to make it really, really super duper for us, okay? Now, if you've been in my lessons or you've been watching my other videos, you will know that these four things are really important to getting us to the top marks because these four things lend itself to a really specific focus. If a writer is using figurative language, it's going to be focusing on the image. They would have chosen that comparison because of the image it puts in the reader's mind. Anytime it's going to talk about any alliteration, that's for a purpose of the sound. The writer would have chosen that group of sounds for a reason. Words are there because of their connotations. So what do they make us think of? And then finally, sentences. Yes, complex, compound, etc., etc. The words are, are a little bit complex. But essentially, a writer will choose what sentences to use because of the pace they create. Either they're very, very, very quick or they're very, very slow. Okay. Now, if that is news to you and you're not sure what on earth I'm talking about here, I strongly recommend that you have a look at, back at the other video I did about bossing language methods. You can get grade nine with the, just these four groups of methods. Okay. There are four types of figurative language, four types of alliteration, four types of words, and four types of sentences that you would be aware, need to be aware of. And then when you know those 16 methods, and when you know those 16 methods lead to these roots, well, then you're on the dance floor, okay? So, I've highlighted the focus of my question, and now I look through my text, and I'm looking for these things. I'm not going to stress about more complicated ideas, oxymorons, juxtapositions, etc. If I know them, great, but these are my stepping stones to the top marks, okay? These are fairly accessible to find, but really, really great in terms of stepping our analysis up to something really quite special, okay? So I'm gonna have a look, okay? They're like playing over the wet flowstone walls, all like pilgrims in a fable swallowed. So I'm gonna have that quote there uh, because I've got my simile, like pilgrims, okay? But I've also got um, the image of a fable and the word choice of a fable. And then I've also got some personification of swallowed, okay? So I've got from that one little quote there, three points ready to go but i'm also going to refer to the sentence as a whole because the examiner wants to see if i can talk about sentences and i absolutely can okay 
Now I've got to make some decisions in my head because I've already found a simile. I've already found some personification. So I'm absolutely smashing figurative language and I've already talked about words and I've already talked about sentences. If my examiner is going to give me a top mark, they want to see that I can analyze a full range of language methods. So really, I'm looking for some alliteration now. I'm looking for a combination of sounds that have been put there deliberately. And as I read on, I've found one here, okay? It sees, it talks about a, 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 a creature, the other side, and it's got eyes, dead white and sightless as the eggs of spiders. So I've got here my sibilance, sightless as the eggs of spiders, okay? Plus, I've obviously got another simile in there because it's comparing them to the eggs of spiders. Now I'm absolutely laughing because I've got two really like, they're not complicated quotes at all, but there's loads and loads of things for me to say about them, okay? Okay, so I'm now ready to start writing my introduction. Now my introduction is always going to start with the writer. The writer, we want to show from the outset that we are aware that this is a creation of the writer. So this writer is called McCarthy, okay? Now I'm going to give one sentence that shows how the language choices work together. I've got this quote here. Now, if I'm thinking about fables, fables are stories. Pilgrims are people that go to a particular place for a purpose, something really important to them. So I learned that about his dream, that it is important to him, that it is something magical, mysterious. But then I also learned that there's a, there's a terror to it, something sightless as the eggs of spiders. Spiders are, are scary. Spiders are things that we don't want to be around. So McCarthy uses language to present the image in the dream as something magical he's drawn to McCarthy used language to present the image of the dream as something magical he's drawn to but also, something terrifying and unnerving. Okay, so there's a nice, simple one line introduction. Okay, if I think like the examiner for a moment, the examiner is going to be very happy that they know that I've got an awareness of the writer, that this is a craft of the writer. They will know that we are focusing specifically on language and they will know that I've been able to talk about how those two language concepts bring themselves together. We are aware this is a dream that is magical, but it's also something terrifying and unnerving. Here is a student who is able to look at a language, not just on a single layer, oh, it's really scary, but able to look at language on a deeper, more thoughtful layer. Okay, now we come to doing our paragraphs. Okay, now once again, the first thing we do is we always start with the writer. So again, let's get McCarthy down on there. Now, the first thing that we need to be doing is we need to be giving our point. Now, in our question twos, the point, the number one thing we need to establish is the method, okay? And it doesn't need to be pretty or fancy. You don't get bonus marks for praising the writer. Oh, McCarthy skillfully combines a use of blah, blah, blah. No, no, nice and simple. McCarthy uses a simile. Nice and simple, okay? McCarthy uses a simile. The next thing I'm now going to do is I'm now going to include my evidence. My evidence is going to be a rich quote. Okay, so let's put that in. McCarthy uses simile in the line, comma, open speech marks like pilgrims in a fable swallowed up. Now, if we go back to our quote that we're going to use, I want to talk about the sentence as a whole, but I'm not going to talk about any of this stuff in the middle, okay? So the way I show my examiner that is I put dot, dot, dot. So like Pilgrim's of the Fable, swallowed up, dot, dot, dot. The examiner knows that I've removed some of the text, and I'm just going to put the end of the text of the quote then. So like swallowed up some granitic beast. Right, massive piece of advice for you. There's a number of students that will look at that quote and think, you know what, 
I'm going to look really, really good if I start analysing words that other people won't have done. So I'm going to talk about granitic beast. If you don't know what granitic means, don't go near it. There's nothing worse than a student that starts analysing something they clearly don't understand and therefore they are literally wasting their ink and wasting the space in their exam and the examiner is, is laughing in their bedroom as they're marking their exam. Okay? So, MacArthur used a simile in a line like Michael Grimm's in a fable swallowed up, some granitic beast. Now we are on to our layers, okay? Now anyone who has been in any of my lessons or knows anything about the way I operate, my layers have three things in them. They need to have a focus, so the focus is what it is we're actually writing about. They need to have an effect, so what is the effect of that method, and then they need to link it back. If I am missing any one of these three things, then my answer is going to be loose, it's not going to be specific to what's being asked, and therefore the examiner is not going to give me the marks that I need. Okay? Now we've made it easy for ourselves because the focus is these guys here, these one, two, three, four, these are our focus, and when we know the focus, we know the effect, which is these guys here. Okay? So let's have a look at this one. MacArthur used a simile in the line, like pilgrims in the fable swallowed up some granitic beast. Let's have our focus. So the first thing we're going to focus on is this simile, like pilgrims. So, the writer uses a simile. Simile is an example of figurative language because we're comparing something to something else. So because we're talking about simile, we're focusing on the image. So, now I'm thinking in my head, What's the image that comes to mind when I think of a pilgrim? So, the writer uses a simile, pilgrim, to create an image of someone um, following a duty. That means a lot to them. Because when I think of pilgrims, I think of people travelling to the Holy Land, I think of people going to Mecca, I think of people going to Jerusalem. They go in there because it means an awful lot to them. It's a really special thing for them to be able to go to these places. Okay? So, Rai uses a simile pilgrim to create an image of someone following a duty that means a lot to them. Now I link it back to my text. Therefore, this shows the dream carried a deeper, I'm going to go on to my next page now, a deeper meaning to the character and he felt a calling to the events. So, this is where this structure is going to be really helpful for me because the mark, the examiner wants to see things that are personal to you, that are original to you. So if you follow this focus effect link structure, it's going to shape your thoughts and structure your thinking to allow you to get to those really high marks. Because I've focused on the method, the writer uses a simile pilgrim. I've given the effect, that creates an image of someone following a duty that means a lot to them. That's what I think, but everyone else will say something different. And now link it back to this dream. Therefore, this shows the dream carried a deeper means to the character and he felt a calling to the events. One layer. I'm going to just make that super clear for you by drawing a little line in there so you can see where one layer ends. Okay, you don't need to do that in your exam. The examiner will know that. Okay, now I'm going to go on to layer number two. So if this is layer one, that's a layer one. Now let's go on to layer two, okay? Now, I'm not finished with Pilgrim yet. There's still things I can also say about Pilgrims. Pilgrims have travelled an awful long way. They're tired, they're weary. So I'm going to add that in there. The simile also creates an image of someone tired and weary. So if my pilgrim is tired and weary, what does that tell me about the guy in the dream? Which reflects the physical and emotional exhaustion of the character in the dream. 
not hard. Focus, the simile. Effect, an image of someone tired and weary. Link it back to the dream. Shows that he's physically and emotionally exhausted. Another layer done. Okay, second layer. Now I'm done with similes. The examiner knows I can talk about similes. So now let's get on to something else. Now if I go back to my quote that I'm gonna talk about, we've talked about like pilgrims, we've talked about the simile. Now let's talk about this personification, swallowed. Okay, so here we go. In addition, the writer also uses personification. Personification, when we're giving something human, um, human uh, action, giving, giving non-human things, human features. So the writer also uses personification when describing how the character was swallowed in the dream. So once again, I've got my focus, the personification. Once again, I'm still talking about figurative language, so I'm now going to talk about the image, okay? So let's talk about the image of swallowed. When I think someone follow, swallowed, I think of an image created is of something destroyed, internalized, and never to be seen again. If I think about swallowing my food, I chew it, chew it, chew it up. I swallow it down into my stomach. And unless I'm feeling particularly sick that day, we never then see it again. Okay? So I've got my image and now I need to link that back to the dream. This demonstrates the power of the dream. For even though it is is beyond reality because it is a dream it's not actually happening it is still uh, emotionally destructive and the character feels he'll never escape okay now, you'll notice this layer is a little bit longer. That's not a problem. That's fine. That's cool. Layer number three. Same things as we did before. The focus is there. The effect is there. And then we've got our link back to our text. Now, I'm doing all right, but I've talked about figurative language twice. And at the minute, the examiner doesn't know I can do any of the other things. So let's, let's really spice it up a little bit now. And let's go to something different. From this quote here, still sticking with that same quote, I've talked about figures of language, figures of language. I could talk about fable, but fable is a similar sort of idea. It's not actually in a fable. It's an interesting word choice or it's an interesting piece of figurative language. But I'm just showing the examiner the same skill again. So I'm going to be different. And for my fourth layer, I'm going to now talk about the sentences. Okay? So, furthermore, those connectives are so important. I'll show you why in a minute. Furthermore, the writer deploys a, and then we're going to tell the examiner what sentence this is. So, like pilgrims in a fable, swallowed up and lost among the inward part of some granitic beast. Okay? So, the way we establish whether it's a complex sentence or not is we are looking for a clause that doesn't make sense on its own so like pilgrims in a fable swallowed up and lost among the inward parts of some granitic beast now really this is a right dodgy sentence because that whole bit we don't know what the pilgrims are like that whole bit there is dependent on somewhere else like pilgrims in a fable swallowed up and lost among the inward parts of some granitic beast it's missed out what the subject is. It, we don't know what it is that's being as, that is the subject. So actually, this is a fragment, which is a bit of an awkward one for us. But you'll see that that literally doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we want to call it. Okay. Furthermore, the writer deploys a fragmented sentence in the line. 
and we're just we're not going to put the whole thing. We're just going to put like pilgrims. Dot 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 to the end beast. Now, <clears throat> the main what we what we're most interested in when it comes to talk about sentences is we want to talk about the pace. It doesn't really matter so much whether it's compound, complex, or minor, whatever it is. It's about the pace that's been created. Now, if we think about pace, sentences, uh, the, the thing that affects the pace of the sentences are the words and punctuation. Think of it as a car. Words go, that's the accelerator. <clears throat> but uh, the punctuation is where it slows it down. So every time there is any commas or dashes or, or uh, brackets, it's slowing down the pace. If we look at this sentence here, there are none. None of that exists. Okay, so let's have a let's put that. Furthermore, right by the fragmented sentence in line, like pilgrims, a beast. For we never know the subject being described. So, two things we're going to say. Because we don't know what the subject is being described, and this is very unique and specific to this sentence, but I'm just going to show you how I would deal with this situation. Um, because we don't know what the subject is being described, well, that adds to the mystery of it. If we don't know what's going on, that reflects the mystery of the of the text. Okay, so like pilgrims, uh, beast, for we never know the subject being described, reflecting the mystery and intrigue of the dream so we did exactly the same order again we did the focus in the sentence the effect is we didn't know the subject being described and so we linked it back to the text reflecting the mystery and intrigue of the dream okay so there is another layer for us but the main thing we want to talk about because as i say that is unique to this sentence that wouldn't be anywhere else but everywhere else we would talk about the pace the pace of this sentence um, is quick because of the lack of punctuation and so then I'm going to link that back to my text I'm thinking what else is quick so this mirrors the pace of the panic of the character as they're overwhelmed by the ordeal. Fifth layer. Now, let's go through this again now, but looking at it as if we are the examiner, okay? So, let's get me our the examiner mark screen, mark, 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 uh, Mark scheme, and here we go. All right, so this is the question two mark scheme. It's from a different question, but essentially the mark scheme is exactly the same regardless of what the question is. Okay, question two, it will be out of eight marks, and we are looking for these top two areas. Okay, clear, relevant explanation, and then perceptive, detailed analysis. Okay, let's have a look at what that means. We are looking for points, language points that clearly explain the effect of writer's choices. That's, there's a range of relevant textual detail, and we make clear and accurate use of subject terminology. Now, we know that my what answer isn't completely finished yet because I need two paragraphs, but I've already shown the examiner so many of the skills they want to see that he makes my second paragraph nice and straightforward. So let's just pretend for a minute I've done my second paragraph, and my second paragraph, my second paragraph is um, not as complicated as that, but there is a nice clear layer layer and there is the same precision in the methods that I've chosen and the same precision in the analysis that I've made. Okay, let's have a look then. McCarthy uses language but in the image, the dream, something magical is drawn to but also in terrifying and unnerving. So the examiner is happy. This is a student that can bring their language choices together. The examiner is happy that we're aware that this is the examiner, this is the writer and the craft of the writer. They can identify methods they can identify relevant evidence. They can be specific. Remember that is. Remember this bit here. Clearly, right, explains clearly the effect of writer's choice of language. Well, they're clearly explaining the effect of the simile there. They're clearly explaining how it relates back to the dream. Oh, hang on. 
this writer, this student has now gone and made a second point about that same method. Love that. So we're still talking about the simile, but we're actually making a different interpretation and again linking it back to the dream. All now this student is able to offer a range of methods because now they're talking about personification. Again, they're talking about it effectively with the image that's been created. And again, they're linking it back to the text. So it's specific and detailed. Hang about. This ride, this student is also talking about sentences. I've marked many, 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 many exams. Not many talk about sentences. And look, they've done it really well because there's the evidence there from the sentence. There's the effect of it. And they link it back. Hold on. They've layered up their ideas about the sentence. That's fantastic. Again, they're talking about the effect. Again, they're talking about... Um, what it what it's doing and then again they link it back to the text so if I look back at my mark scheme is it clearly explaining the effect to write a choice language 100% if I've got my second paragraph have I got a range of textual detail yes but I've also from that one paragraph one that one quote I've got five different layers of things to say so I've got a whole range of textual detail and I've got clear and accurate use of subject terminology. I talk about fragments, talk about similes, I talk about personification, and I offer a variety of different ways to analyze them. Now, those layers come into their own when we come to our top one, okay? Anyone can get into that top level four if they use layers. You don't need to be Shakespeare to get into your level four, okay? Because let's have a look at it. Analyze the effects of so shows perceptive and detailed understanding. Perceptive means it's unique and personal to you. Well, if, if you follow your focus, effect, link structure, you're going to be making points that are unique to you, that are going to be original to yourself. You're not just regurgitating what the obvious thing that everyone else would have said. Oh, spiders are scary. If you follow my process and my system, you'll be making points that are unique and personal to you. Detailed obviously means that it goes further. It's not just the obvious, it's not just the simple, but they go further in their analysis, okay? Our paragraph that we've just written, you cannot argue, does not go into detail, doesn't argue that it goes to its furthest points, okay? So, you could argue as an examiner, does this person perceptively with detail analyze the effect of right choice of language? Well, five layers have been given about one quote, so yes. Have we got a range of issues of textual detail? Again, if I did my second paragraph, that second quote would be enough. And if I picked it apart to that same extent, that would be enough. And it makes sophisticated, accurate use of subject terminology. The far, far, far more significant thing is what you do with the subject terminology and the precision and the quality of the interpretations. Okay, and that's come right from the top of AQA. They are the quotes, the techniques are a springboard to the quality of your interpretations. Perhaps there isn't the most sophisticated language uh, terminology here, but this analysis is perceptive and it is detailed. And the examiner has to credit what they see. So if they've got this in, in spades, then it doesn't matter about the other two, you get into this top band, okay? Layers and layers and layers are your most effective way of getting into your top, top, top of your mask. Okay?